Good morning. I am Dr. Sachin Arjun Grue, Assistant Professor from Arts, Science, Commerce College, Saikheda. I am preparing this video as an assignment of the macro teaching in online refresher course in biological science, which is conducted by UGC HRDC, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Maratwada University, Aurangabad. So in this video, I am uh, taken the topic that is uh, wing coupling and wing modification in insects. The wing coupling, these are the structure which is present into the wings of an insect, which is helpful for coupling the forewing with that of the hind wing to synchronize the movement. And the in the later part, we are going to learn the wing modification in insect, in which the particularly the forewing in some insects they are get modified for some other functions particularly for the protection purpose how they are get modified so that we are going to learn in this video so let's see the major movement of the wings during the flight are produced by the distortions of the thorax and because they are so closely associated the movement of each thoracic segment must influence the other and hence it is impossible for the forewing and the hindwing to beat completely independently of one another and in Orthoptera and Odonata where the wings are not otherwise linked both pairs of wings are vibrate with the same frequency and with a hind wing beat consistently more advanced than that of the fore wing beat. So which can be the condition found into the Orthoptera and the Odonata. But in several other insects, coupling of the fore wing with that of the hind wing of either side is take place in a such a way that they move together as a single unit mostly with the help of the lobes or the spines lying at the basal region of the wing and representing a coupling mechanism and that is referred as the wing coupling apparatus. Now different kinds of the insect contains a different kinds of the wing coupling of which we are going to learn the four kinds of the wing couplings present into the different insect. The first wing coupling is the Macopteran wing coupling. Second type is referred as the Jugate wing coupling. Third kind of the wing coupling is present into the Lepidopteran insect which is known as the Frenate wing coupling and the fourth one is a hamulet wing coupling. So let's see one by one start with the first wing coupling that is the Macopteran wing coupling. In the uh, Macopteran wing coupling, a primitive arrangement is found in some Macoptera of the family Chirostidae in which there is a jugal lobe at the base of forewing and the humeral lobe at the base of coastal margin of the hind wing and both the lobes are set with the CT. So here in this diagram you can see so this one is the forewing and this one is the hind wing. So this is a region which is known as a humeral region which is the basal region of the hind wing which are provided with a set of the CT and is known as a jugal or the frenellar bristles. So here you can see, so these are the bristle-like structures which are originated at the basal region of the humeral lobe, which are referred as the frenellar bristle. This frenellar bristle is also referred as a jugal bristle respectively. So although they do not formally link the wings, but they overlap the sufficiently to prevent the wing moving out of the face. So this is a very simple kind of the wing coupling can be represented into the Macopteran insect where the frenellar bristle 
and a jugal bristles these are responsible for overlapping a some area particularly the jugal area of the forewing this wing coupling is not that so efficient but it is sufficient to prevent the wings which are moving out of phase so that both the wings are bit simultaneously so here in this diagram you can see so this uh, this is a jugal region of the wing and this one is the basal part of the hind wing where the frenular bristle and the jugal bristles are responsible for overlapping some area of the jugal part of the forewing with the help of which the movement of both the forewing as well as hind wing can be synchronized and this kind of the wing coupling can be referred as the mecopteran wing coupling the next one is the jugate wing coupling in some trichoptera only the jugum is present so here you can see the, the jugum we and it lies on the top of hind wing so this is a hind wing and this one is a forewing so this is a jugal portion of the forewing this jugum is well developed and it is lies at the top of the hind wing particularly from the basal side and coupling mechanism here is not that efficient however in the hippalidae which is the family belongs to the lepidoptera have a strong jugal lobe so here in this diagram you can see the strong jugal lobe is there which lies beneath the costal margin of the hind wing so that this is held between the jugum and the rest of the forewing this kind of the wing coupling is referred as the jugate wing coupling where the part of the jugal of the forewing is going to overlap a basal region of the hind wing and the example of this jugate wing coupling is that is the micro lepidopteran moths and some lepidopteran insect belongs to the hippalidae which are provided with a such a kind of the wing coupling can be referred as the jugate wing coupling then the next wing coupling is referred as the frenate wing coupling which is a more elaborate kind of the wing coupling can be present into the lepidopteran insect particularly into the moths in micropterygidae the jugum is folded under the four wings and holds the frenular bristle so here you can see the frenular bristle is there so this type of coupling is referred as the jugo frenate wing coupling jugo frenate wing coupling where the frenular bristles are going to hold by the jugal area many of the other lepidoptera have a well developed frenulum which engages or joins with that of the catch so called as a retinaculum so this is a known as a retinaculum or this retinaculum is also referred as a catch which is responsible for holding that frenular bristle which arises from the humeral lobe of the hind wing so this is a hind wing and this one is a fore wing so this is a radial vent and at from the ventral view of the radial vent they it develops a retinaculum or a catch and this retinaculum is responsible for holding that frenular bristle so that hind wing is very tightly coupled with that of the fore wing which can be represent into the many moths this kind of the coupling is referred as the frenate kind of the wing coupling in case of female noctutes so this kind of the wing coupling is represented into the males where there is a singular single thick frenular bristle is there which is hold by the retinaculum so here in this diagram you can see so this one is a hind wing and this one is a fore wing the fore wing it has a radial vein so this one is a radial vein and, and this radial vein contains a catch known as a retinaculum and this is the humeral part of the hind wing where it arises a frenular bristle and this frenular bristle here which is catched by 
the retinacular. So this can be condition which is found into the male lepidopteran insect moths. But in case of females, noctutes, for instance, have a form 2 to 20 frenular bristles and the retinaculum of the forwardly directed hairs on the underside of the cubital vein. So there is a great difference between the frenate wing coupling of the female with that of the male. Male generally contains a single bristle of the frenulum but here in case of the female the number of frenular bristles are ranges from 2 to 20 and it can be hold by the retinaculum which is a somewhat hairy. So in this diagram you can see there are, are two frenulums are there and which can be held by the hairy retinaculum or it is also re referred as a catch. But here in case of female this retinaculum is lies on the cubital vein while in case of the male it lies on the radial vein. Obviously both the structures are present from the ventral side. So here you can see the ventral surface of the wing of the female. So this one is the hind wing and this one is a fore wing. So this is a cubital vein. So this is cubital vein which contains a retinaculum or the catch and from the basal part of the hind wing that is humeral lobe contain, uh, arises a and two retinaculum which is held like this one. But in case of male, the frenular bristles are get fused together to form a single stout spine. The retinaculum is a cuticular clasp on the radial vein. So this is the difference between the frenate wing coupling of the female and the frenate wing coupling of the male. The distinct difference are the bristles are 2 to 20 and the retinaculum is present on the cubital vein. While in case of male, this number of frenular bristles are get fused with one another forming a single shaft or the bristle like structure and which is held by the catch or retinaculum which lies on the radial vein. So this is the major difference between the male frenate wing coupling and the female frenate wing coupling. In Thysanoptera, have the wing coupled in comparable way by hooked spine at the base of hind wing which catches the membranous fold of that of the fore wing. So different kinds of the conditions are provided here. So here in case of the Thysanoptera, the wings are coupled with the help of hooked spines at the base of hind wing and these are catching actually the membranous fold of the fore wing. So this can be the wing coupling known as the frenate wing coupling. And the last one is referred as the hamulate wing coupling which is a peculiarity of the order Hymenoptera or insect Hymenoptera insect. Among the Hymenoptera, hamulate type of wing coupling consists of the rows of small hooks. These small hooks are referred as a hamulate. So here in this diagram you can see this one is a hind wing and this is a postal margin of the hind wing. At the middle of wing, you can able to form a hook like structure which is referred as a hamula. So here you can see the presence of hamula or in this diagram it is very clear. Which are the number of hooks lies at the middle region of the postal margin of the hind wing. And the thick cuticular fold along the hind margin of the four wings are developed. So here, this is a margin of four wing. Now these hind hook like structure of the hind wings, these are responsible for holding this margin of the four wing. And this kind of the wing coupling can be referred as the hamulate kind of the wing coupling, which is well evident into the honeybees, particularly into the workers. You can see at the middle region of the coastal margin of hind wing, the presence of such a hooks known as the hamulae and the wing coupling referred as the hamulate wing coupling. So this is about the different kinds of the wing couplings present in an insect. This is just to synchronize the movement of the fore wing that with that of the hind wing so that the fore wing and hind wings can be bid at a simultaneous rate or at the simultaneous time.
and this is just to avoid the high vibration and the distortion that occurs into the thoracic segment so this is about the wing coupling mechanism among the insects the next topic is the wing forms and the modification the shape of the wing is probably determined primarily by the aerodynamic considerations but other ecological factors may provide a different selective pressure for the shape of the wings the wings are narrow petiolate bases are found in relatively slow flying insect and such as the some damselfly and the antlion where you can found a very narrow basis which is present at the base of wing which is referred as a petiolate basis and the wing is also very narrow so this characteristic shape of the wing representing a slow flying insect now this shape probably minimizes the drag on the body due to the downwash of the air from the flapping of the wings and the wings with the broad bases on the other hand they are associated with the capacity of the rapid flight which can be found into the active flying insect where you can found the broad bases with the help of that broad bases the wings are attached to that of the thoracic region they occur in a orthoptera hemiptera and lepidoptera which contains a comparatively large size a basal area or the broad bases which is helpful for attaching to that of the thoracic segment representing the fast flying insect now from just a base you can able to distinguish the insect which are the active flyers and which are the weak flyers if the petiolate bases are there representing the weak flight and the broad bases is there representing the fast flying activity in some insects particular wing forms are presumed to have some ecological significance apart from the production of aerodynamic forces although their real significance is not always a certain one and hence in many insect either fore wing or the hind wing instead of giving the aerodynamic force they are modified into the different kinds of the structure and that modification is referred as the wing modification so that wing modification we are going to discuss now the first wing modification is referred as a tegmina or it is also referred as a tegmen the fore wing of many insects are thicker than that of the hind wing and serve to protect the hind wing when they are folded at a resting condition so for example here in this diagram you can see the cockroach is there so this is a fore wing which is somewhat thicker than that of the hind wing which is a somewhat membranous and if you see this a resting position the hind wing is get protected with the help of thick fore wing so here the fore wing modified in this way is known as the tegmina or it is also referred as a tegmen the leathery tegmina occurs in a blattoidea which is the family of cockroaches mantidae for example praying mantis orthoptera means all kind of the grasshoppers also shows a same kind of modification with their fore wing which is a somewhat thicker one than that of the hind wing and also into the dermaptera where the fore wings are thicker than that of the hind wing and giving a some sort of the protection to the hind wing as well as the abdominal tergite the fore wings in these cases are more or less thicken having a distinct venation 
it is leathery and parchment like long narrow and may colored uniformly which can be seen here in this diagram or in this figure the same pigmentation is there or with the deep shades towards the bases or may be spotted so different kinds of the condition if you see the four wing of grasshopper it is generally spotted one the main function of the tegmen is the protection of the body and it can be found into the four wing of cockroaches and four wing of grasshopper so this is the first modification known as the tegmina or the tegmen the next one is a electra now four wings of the coleoptera that is beetles are usually very heavily sclerotized and the basic venation is altogether lost so representing no classical venation particularly into the four wing although it may be indicated internally by the arrangement of the trachea so internal arrangement of the trachea is always there but the wing venation is lost now this modification of the four wing in case of coleoptera can be referred as the elytra representing a highly sclerotized and thick wings again the function of elytra is to provide a protection to the hind wing as well as the abdominal target the two surfaces of the electron are separated by the blood space across which runs a cuticular columns known as a trabeculae which arrange in a longitudinal rows and marked externally by striations so if you see closely towards this electra you can found a vertical striations are there and if you decatenize the four wing that is elytra of the beetle you will obtain a such a kind of structure where you can easily able to recognize such a kind of the longitudinal rows which are referred as a trabeculae so there are usually 9 or 10 such a striations present in the four wing of the coleoptera although the number may be as high as a 25 in some carabidae insect okay so the usually number is about 9 to 10 but that number may be increase up to the 25 the elytra of beetle do not overlap into the midline but meet and are held together by the tongue and grooved joint but in some carabidae they are fused together so that they cannot able to open the four wing and in these species the hind wings are also reduced and they are unable to fly now the presence of the elytra is one of the modification which is well recognized among the coleopteran insect conferring a protection to the abdomen as well as the hind wings this is known as the elytra the next modification can be referred as the hemielytra in case of heteroptera only the basal part of the wing is sclerotized or hardened and the distal part of the wing is a somewhat membranous now such a wing modification is referred as hemielytra hemi in the sense half elytra means sclerotized region so only half of the region is sclerotized and half of the area is membranous known as hemielytra the basal part of the hemielytron may be subdivided into the different regions which can be well marked by the wings and in case of the myriads where the development is most complete the anterior part of the wing is cut off from the proximal embolium so this one is a embolium and the distal one is known as the cuneus so this one is a cuneus and the basal one is known as the embolium the center of the wing 
can be referred as a corium. So this one is a central part of the hemileton or the basal part of the wing can be referred as a corium. And the anal region which is cut off from that of the clavus is known as the clavus here. This is a anal most region. And remaining distal portion which is a generally the membranous region and this is simply referred as the membrane. So, in this way, hemiletra can be divisible into the different regions: embolium, cuneus, central portion known as a corium, and anal portion known as the clavus. And the distal most remaining portion is a membranous one, and it can be referred as simply a membrane. In ligolids, only the corium and the clavus are differentiated. Only the corium and the clavus, where the embolium and cuneus is not distinguished. The terminal portion of the forewing is a termidon membrane, which can be found or designated into the in case of the heteroptera. And this kind of the hemiletra is also having a same function that is the protection of the hindwing and the abdomen and which is well evident into the heteropteran insect and the hemipteran insect. So, this is about the modification known as the hemiletra. And the last modification or another modification is the halters. The hind wings of the diptera are modified to form a halter which are the sense organ concerned with the maintenance of the stability in the flight. That is they are acting as a balancing organ. So here in this case you can see the dipteran fly. This one is a forewing and if you see the hindwing, the hindwing is get modified into the dumbbell shaped structure like this one and is known as the halter which is actually acting as the balancing organ. Each halter consists of the basal lobe. This is a basal lobe which is known as a stalk and the end lobe which projects backward from the end of the stalk so that its center of mass is always behind the stalk. So this is you can see the mass of the terminal portion is always behind the stalk. This is a arrangement of the halter you can form. The whole structure is rigid except for some flexibility of the ventral surface. Near the basis, which allows a some freedom of movement, while the cuticle of end node is thin but kept distended by the turgidity of the large vacuolated cells which are present inside it. These halters are variable in size also. The sensory organ is formed by a small set of scapel plate. And this organ helps in maintaining the stability of the flight on the basal lobe of the halter or the group of camponiform sensilla can be recognized. Here you can see at the basal region, it contains a different kinds of the sensilla. And that sensilla is referred as a campiniform sensilla, which can be homologized with that of the group of groups at the base of normal wings. Near the basal plate is a small group of camponiform sensilla present known as the Higgs papilla. So these are the Higgs papilla which are actually the sense organs. Now these are set below the general surface of the cuticle and are oriented parallel with that of the long axis of the halter. Now these sensilla react to the force acting on the base of halters during the flight and hence they are giving the sense of direction and they are also helps in balancing of the insect and hence are referred as the balancing organ. They perceive a vertical movement of the halter and also the torque which is produced by the lateral turning movement of the fly. And hence, they can be recognized as the balancing organ, which is one of the modification can be found into the 
dipteran insect where the hind wing is get modified into the dumbbell like structure this is known as the halter and the last modification is known as the pterostigma on the anterior margin of the wing there is a pigmented spot present in some insect and this pigmented spot is known as the pterostigma in case of coronata this pterostigma present at both forewing as well as hind wing this serves to strengthen the edges of the wing membrane as these insects are very strong flyer and just to give the strengthening to the edges of the wing because generally the wing having the two membranes which are get attached with one another very closely leaving a gap which can be taken by the wings and just to give the extra rigidity as they are very active flying insect this pterostigma is there on the coastal margin of both forewing as well as hindwing which is also one of the modification present into the coronatal insect known as the pterostigma so this is about the different kinds of the wing modification present among the